if placenta is not delivered within 30 minutes after the delivery of the newborn and the woman is not bleeding and there are no signs of circulatory compromise, ensure that the bladder is empty, repeat 10 units of oxytocin and continue controlled cord traction. Remember to never administer oxytocin via IV push. Do not repeat misoprostol for manual removal of the placenta. To help deliver the placenta, encourage the woman to bear down, squat, or breastfeed. Perform manual removal of placenta with no delay if placenta or placental tissue fails to be delivered within one hour and there is no bleeding, or the woman is bleeding heavily, or there are signs of circulatory compromise. A woman can lose a life-threatening amount of blood in a very short time in cases of retained placental tissue. If bleeding heavily, first call for help. Then stop the bleeding by applying aorta compression and start resuscitation of the mother. Inform the woman and her companion of the procedure. Resuscitation. The woman must lie down flat with head low and legs up to be sure the blood gets to her brain. Establish two large bore IV lines, one in each arm. Use a gray cannula, size 16, or a green, size 18. Check the woman's breathing, blood pressure, and pulse. Give one to two liters of normal saline or Ringer's lactate, one bag at a time. You apply pressure to make the fluid go in as fast as possible. A general rule is that the blood volume lost must be replaced by three times the volume in crystalloids. If blood transfusion is available at your facility, you take blood for blood type and cross match. Drugs before removal. In order to obtain pain relief and relaxation prior to manual removal of placenta, you can give the woman morphine and or diazepam intramuscularly or intravenously. See drug list for details. In case of excessive bleeding, apply aorta compression while administering pain relief. Administer a single dose of broad-spectrum antibiotics. Ideally, administer immediately prior to performing manual removal of placenta either 2 grams of ampicillin intravenously or 1 gram of cefazolin intravenously. However, do not delay placental removal if actively hemorrhaging. Gloves Put on elbow-long sterile gloves if available. Otherwise, use normal sterile gloves. Even non-sterile gloves can be used if bleeding is life-threatening. Remove the placenta. Insert a hand into the vagina and follow the cord into the uterus. Place the other hand on top of the fundus to support the uterus. Keep the fingers tightly together and move the hand slowly from side to side until the edge of the placenta is located. Use the edge of the hand to gently separate the placenta from the uterine wall. The uterine wall is very fragile, so be careful not to apply unnecessary force. Proceed slowly all around the placental bed until the placenta is detached from the uterine wall. Hold the placenta and slowly withdraw the hand while the other hand provides a counterpressure in the other direction. Palpate the uterine cavity to ensure that all placental tissue has been removed. Drugs after removal. Administer an oxytocin drip. Mix 20 units of oxytocin in one liter of normal saline or Ringer's lactate. Infuse the oxytocin drip at a rate of 60 drops per minute. If intravenous oxytocin is unavailable or if the bleeding does not respond to oxytocin, give ergometrine 0.2 mg intravenously slowly if the woman has no hypertension.
mesoprostol, 800 micrograms sublingually or rectally. Tranexamic acid, 1 gram in 10 milliliters of diluent per IV over 10 minutes. Tranexamic acid has been proven to save lives. See drug list for further information on indication, dosage, and frequency. Monitoring. Provide continuous uterine massage to stimulate the uterus to contract and proceed to performing bimanual compression if needed. Monitor bleeding, pulse, blood pressure, and respiration. Ensure the uterus is well contracted every 15 minutes for two hours and then every 30 minutes for the next four hours. Make sure to measure the woman's hemoglobin the following day and recommend an iron supplement of 120 milligrams two times per day for three months. Manual removal of the placenta can prevent or stop a postpartum hemorrhage. Remember, in an actively hemorrhaging woman, never refer without having tried to remove the placenta or fragments of the placenta, and never refer her without being accompanied by a skilled birth attendant. See practical procedure. Continue to provide resuscitation and aorta compression during transfer. Consider applying a uterine balloon tamponade prior to referral if bleeding continues.